Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today is not one of my usual uploading days. In fact, you will get another video of mine tomorrow. But there's two reasons why I wanted to upload one today anyway. First of all, because I didn't upload anything on Thursday. And second of all, because the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power came out yesterday. Well, the first two episodes did. And so I wanted to sit down as close as possible to the release of those first two episodes and give you my first thoughts on them. Do I think the show is worth starting? Am I intrigued? Am I interested to see where it's going? Am I happy with everything so far or am I not happy? And yeah. So let's get into it. This video is going to be very similar to my House of the Dragon first impressions video. But while I will talk about spoilers, I will probably talk about spoilers a little bit less than I did in my House of the Dragon review. However, I will tell you before I get into spoilers, so do not worry about that. So before I get into my thoughts on the show, I always like to start my adaptation reviews with a bit of context of where I'm at with adaptations or, you know, with original works in terms of that adaptation. Although I'm not even sure if you can call The Rings of Power an adaptation because obviously it's a new story. It's based on stuff that we kind of know some about in terms of what Tolkien wrote down in a lot of his other work but you know it's not a specific adaptation as the lord of the rings was a specific adaptation of a specific book however in terms of the lord of the rings or tolkien's work middle earth as a whole where am i at i am honestly someone who really enjoys the lord of the rings i love the books when i read them I really, really love the movies. The movies are some of my biggest comfort movies of all time. You know that I am not someone who watches a lot of TV or watches a lot of movies and probably like I would say three times out of ten when I watch a movie it will be a rewatch of one of the Lord of the Rings movies. Aside from that with Tolkien's greater work I have read The Hobbit, I have read The Silmarillion, I cannot remember a single thing from the Silmarillion because I found it really tried to be honest. I am not the biggest lore buff when it comes to Tolkien so I can't say a lot about the lore that we get to see or a lot about the histories that we get to see within the Rings of Power show but I also do not care about that too much. In general when it comes to adaptations I am not someone who has a purist type of approach. You will know that if you have watched my The Fantasy Community is Racist question mark video uh, where I kind of talked about how silly I find it, how extremely people react to characters being cast with actors of different ethnicities. So yeah, I generally see it as a positive thing when adaptations kind of, you know, <laughs> are less white than the source material, especially when the source material is as old as The Lord of the Rings. And you know, it was written in a different time and I think adaptations to a certain degree also have the freedom to adapt to newer times uh, and to newer mindsets. And I don't think that that necessarily has to be, you know, against the, the spirit of what the source material was. But yeah, overall what I am really, you know, subconsciously comparing the Rings of Power to, as I said, are the movies because those are what is closest to me even though even though I do also have critique points of the movies obviously uh, in terms of <laughs> orientalism and other stuff and you know the movies especially the only actors of color that were cast were cast as orcs and as evil humans and you know the evil humans were very much as in the original source material very much you know coded as people of color uh, let's put it like that so yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming from with The Lord of the Rings. And if you want to know more of my thoughts on, you know, diversifying fantasy, watch that video. I will leave it linked down below. Uh, I won't really answer any comments to uh, they ruined the show because uh, insert racist remark in this video. Like if you comment anything along those lines in this video, I will just straight up delete it. Uh, you can comment whatever you want on that other video. I probably won't answer anymore because 
genuinely just got tired of rehashing the same arguments over and over again. But yeah, so that was kind of my point of view when we started getting promotional material. And then I was like, I am kind of not feeling most of what we're getting in terms of promotional material. I don't know, I feel like I, I can't really get a feel of what this story is going to be about and I can't really get excited for it for some reason. So yeah, I watched the first episode, the first two episodes yesterday and I just turned it on. <laughs> I didn't really go into it being particularly excited or whatever but just, you know, I'm gonna see what it's like and yeah, my overall thoughts now are they're good. Uh, I have some issues with it. There's one particular issue which, to be honest, is just a pet peeve and shouldn't be a hill that I'll die on, but uh, that just really I can't get past and it upsets me so much. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get to that later, but overall I enjoyed it. I'm intrigued to see where the story goes in the future. But I also have some very specific problems and like one of the biggest problems to be honest is the storytelling does not feel Lord of the Rings. And what I mean by that is that uh, aside from the Silmarillion, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit both were stories where yes we also did have a bigger cast of characters especially in the Lord of the Rings obviously we had the fellowship but at the center there was a person who was seemingly a nobody and that was on purpose. Tolkien chose the hobbits as the central focus of telling his story for a purpose because they are just this little small person that just seem like they're way too small for this big task that they have been given and yet they still overcome it. And they're not even like in a lot of other earlier fantasy stories where maybe they seem like they are nothing at the very beginning. They are not secretly princes or kings or they're not chosen ones. They really are just hobbits. And that to a certain degree, while for example the stories of the Fellowship are important, it's Frodo and Sam who are at the center of the story and who make the story what it is. It's the little people <laughs> that make the story what it is. And with this story, with the Rings of Power, our central character, even though we do also have the Harfoots and we're gonna get some of the, you know, Hobbit type storytelling there, I'm sure, the central character at the story so far really is Galadriel. And she has also, which might also be because obviously Galadriel and Elrond are two of the characters with the biggest, you know, name recognition within the fandom or even for casual fans. So maybe it'll change once we get to later episodes and we don't need the intrigue of, you know, having recognizable characters anymore to pull in fans. But so far Galadriel and also Elrond really have been the two focal characters. And they are just not what you'd call, you know, the little folk, the, the, the small people, the, the people who seem unimportant. They are even within the elven society, it is made very clear already, they do somewhat have some importance or they are somewhat of some importance. And I don't know, it just makes the storytelling for me so far feel very on Lord of the Rings, even though I have to be honest in terms of vibes, in terms of surroundings, in terms of most character designs, it's just, it's very recognizably Lord of the Rings. You can show me a lot of frames from the first two episodes and I will say yeah that, that's a Lord of the Rings adaptation. So they really did well in that regard. It's just that so far in terms of the storytelling I'm like but this does not feel Lord of the Rings though. This does not feel like what I know of Tolkien's work. So yeah, I'm going to be interested to see where it goes. And it's not like Tolkien never, you know, had big heroes or whatever, because we do have the Silmarillion also. And obviously um, the second age is the age of elves and we are going to get more of them and so on. So yeah. Um, then another thing that I am not the biggest fan of so far, like a lot of the acting is really good. However, I don't really like it when elves interact with elves. 
because their speech is very stilted and formal, which makes sense. And I don't have a problem with that because that was also the case in the original Lord of the Rings movies that, you know, the elves and also other humans and everything because it's very medievally, obviously, talk very formally to each other. However, for me, and maybe it's just the nostalgia with the original Lord of the Rings movies, um, could very well be, to be honest. It's just when you have Kate Blanchett and Hugo Weaving and even Orlando Bloom talking in this way, I don't know, I feel like they can carry it a lot better and it doesn't feel like it's just lines being said. However, for me, when the actor and actress for Elrond and Galadriel talk to each other, it just felt very performed to me. It didn't really feel like they could, you know, exude the elvishness <laughs> that makes this formal speech not be awkward. So yeah, I just, in the first episode, I had a bit of an issue with that. In the second episode, it, I actually thought it was a little bit better. Um, I got past it so maybe it's also just something that I need to get used to and as I said I wasn't the most excited for the first episode or when I started the first episode so maybe I was just looking for things to nitpick about so I don't know uh, but yeah the first episode overall I was like mm, I'm not really feeling this to be honest uh, because as I said while most performances I do love and even with the stiltiness of some of the elves it's just it's still generally okay. There's only really one performance that I really don't like and I'll get to that uh, in a bit. Overall, once I finished the second episode, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm starting to feel this. I absolutely love the dwarves. To be honest, that something that they did really well in general uh, with the character designs once again and I mean that's already from the original Lord of the Rings it's just very distinct to each character and it's beautifully done I love how the dwarves are done I love most of the character design of the elves I love the um, Harfoots Hargroves Harfoots it's Harfoots I think uh, I am sure I'm really gonna enjoy the humans once we'll get to see more of them. Obviously, so far we have gotten to see very little of them. I am very excited to see Numenor and what they do with that. So yeah, again, as I said, visually, uh, this show is amazing. Storytelling, I still have my issues. Acting-wise, I am mostly really happy with most of the performances. As I said, there's one performance that I just really don't like and that's the actor of Arondil. And once again, I'm just kind of sad that that has to be the actor where I'm annoyed because I know that that was one of the castings where the actor probably got the most shit about together with the actress for Disa because obviously we don't have a white elf, we have an elf who is portrayed by an actor of color. I think, I looked it up, I think he's Puerto Rican. But his performance just overall, he had like one facial expression and that was it. And yeah, it just didn't feel like he's just portraying a very stoic character, but it felt like, no, he just couldn't act. So yeah. Not really happy with that. Really like the Gila woman person, um, so very excited for that. And yeah, aside from that, actually I don't have that much <laughs> spoilery to say. Uh, I don't really have anything spoilery to say. Just one last thing, the biggest thing that just I can't guess past is the hairs of the elves. Like, I'm sorry, we got this for Thranduil in The Hobbits as horrible as those movies are. And yet somehow character designers decided to give the male elves like modern beach wave TikTok fuckboy hairstyles. Like, who decided on that? Who decided on that? And it's not that you have to give all elves long hair. I mean, in my opinion, Lord of the Rings elves have long hair, but also I'd be hypocritical to be like, no elves have to have long hair um, because that's how Tolkien wrote them, because obviously I'm fine with the 
Thetian people changing other things. However, these specific hairstyles that they gave the male elves just make them look really modern and ah, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it and it's one of the main things that really, you know, made it hard for me to get into the first episode and to get into the world and to immerse myself and yeah, I just really don't like it. Also, okay, one last thing. I think I would enjoy this series more or so far I, I would enjoy it more if Elrond and Galadriel weren't Elrond and Galadriel but uh, random characters and I don't know as I said I'm not that well versed in Middle Earth history and you know whatever I don't know if um, the Rings of Power you know, took from actual stories that Tolkien wrote down in terms of Elrond and Galadriel having these roles during these times. Um, but I don't know, both of them, the way they are written, they don't feel like Elrond and Galadriel. And I know it's like thousands of years earlier or whatever. And obviously it's gonna be the Rings of Power. I'm assuming that part of what we'll get to see, maybe not within the first season, but within the show, is how the Rings of Power are made um, and how Sauron was defeated, you know, the, this time. But also Hugo Weaving and Kate Blanchett are such amazing actors that it's just really hard to get past of the internal image that I have of Elrond and Galadriel. And it's not the fault of the new actors, uh, it's mostly just the writing that just makes me go, but but these don't feel like these characters. Uh, and I don't know, I, maybe they'll grow on me, maybe I'll start enjoying it, but yeah. And so yeah, that's my general thoughts. Uh, I realized that this video seemed very negative and that's because there's a lot of concrete things that so far make me feel very hesitant about the show. But overall, to be honest, and I promise, I feel intrigued by the show. I had a mostly positive viewing experience, especially of the second episode. I want to see where it goes in the future and I am completely open to seeing my opinion of it improve. So yeah. I guess that's it. If you have seen the first two episodes of The Rings of Power, tell me your comments down below. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, I hope I haven't, you know, discouraged you from going and checking the first two episodes out. If you enjoyed this video, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. All the links to my social media as well as to my book club of Queens, Witches and Valkyries, where we read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or gender per person per month, will be left linked down below. So go and check those out as well. And I hope I'll see you very soon. Bye.